So a review of what we did last time, uh, taking the actions that we made for isometric perspective and using them to shift two-dimensional shapes and making them look three-dimensional. Um, I'm going to use these sides that I have here and I'm going to first draw and make a new layer. I'm going to first make some letters. And choose a better typeface. And convert this to outlines. And then ungroup these so I can get to each one individually. And then I'm going to take three of these squares here and put my letters onto, put a letter onto each face. And I'll change the colors too, just so everything's easier to see. And because I'm a perfectionist, I'll go through and align everything, make sure it's centered. All right, so I've got my three sides. I'm gonna go ahead and group all of this stuff just so I don't accidentally move anything around. And then I'm gonna duplicate each one of these and apply in action. So the A will be, the A side will be the left side, so isometric left side. B will be the top. I'm going to do isometric clockwise. Yeah. And then C is going to be the right side, so isometric right side. Then I'll take all these and just fit them together to make my box. So you all would be opening up a new document and having it the same size as your final piece. I'm just going to make a new one and have it be a bit smaller just because I'm not doing an entire map, but I'm going to go ahead and make a new file, and maybe I'll make it 640 by 480. And I'm just going to copy and paste my block in here. I'm going to duplicate it because I'm going to try a few different kinds of animations. So to demonstrate kind of what you need to consider with the background, I'm actually going to go ahead and put a background on here. Um, and I'll make a really simple pattern really fast, just like a dotted background, so you guys can kind of imagine what you need to think about with your, with your piece. I'm just going to do like a polka dotted kind of thing. I 
And remember with the patterns, when you make a swatch, the swatch is going to be at whatever size the original object is. So that's why I shrunk this down so that the pattern is a bit smaller. And then I'm going to go over to my layer and I'm going to call this base. You can name it whatever you want, just something that you know, that lets you know that this is the bottom layer uh, and it needs to always be showing. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and put in this background so you all can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take this box here and have it look like it's kind of the sides are changing from one to the other. Um, so to do that, it's just going to be a matter of, of rotating it. Um, I'm going to group these together. I don't know why I didn't do that before. But the thing I'm going to do, so this is my base layer. I'm going to do Command C to copy this and then make a new layer. So uh, I'm going to call this one. So it's the first part of my animation. And then while I have this layer selected, I'm going to do Command F to paste in front exactly where I had it before. And then I'm going to want to rotate this. Uh, so I want to rotate it so that the A side is at the top and so on and so forth. So that's the first part of that animation. I'm going to copy it again, do a new layer, I'm going to call this one 2, and then Command F again, and I'm going to rotate it again. Now if I want to, and because I'm going to have other things animating and I might need more um, frames than just three, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just repeat it, um, but if this was your animation and you were just going to have it flip the three sides, then really you would only need these three frames. Um, but since I'm going to add more stuff, I'm going to just do it over again. Um, let's see, so it's again new layer, call this three, copy this one. Select three, Command F, and rotate. And really, the first uh, two animations, I can just copy those and rename them. So this is four, and this is five. To kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like, what you can do is just turn the layers on and off, and you can see how the animation is going to change. So pretty easy way to preview it. Now this next one, um, what I'm going to try to do is make it look like the block is falling. So I'm going to go to the base, and for this one, since this is going to be moving, I'm not going to keep the same, um, the same position every single time. I'm actually going to move the object. So since this is falling, I'm going to go to the base and start it more towards the top. And I'm going to copy it, go to 1, Actually, let's see. I'm trying to think of how this would work. Actually, I'm going to cut it from this one. I'm going to do Command F 
for the first frame, copy, choose layer two, command F, and I'm going to shift it down. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use shift in the arrow keys, which moves the object down in 10 point increments, just so I can remember how far I've moved it. Um, you could also go over to transform and enter some dimensions here. So it's just whatever works best for you. So I'm going to take that, copy this, go to layer three, command F, move this down, copy again, go to layer four, command F, copy again, Layer 5, Command F, so that's how that animation would work. Now what would happen with this one is it would actually be turning on and off, so if I have them all turned on, then you'd be able to see every single part of the animation. So. What's going to happen when we bring it into Photoshop is I'm going to actually turn off all of the animation layers except the one I want to show at that point in time. So I can see what's happening a little bit better. And then, let's see, what do you guys think I should do for the last one? I guess I could make it look like, maybe change the color of one of these sides. I could do that. I'll make it fall and spin and the sides, the colors change. I'm just going to make things really hard on myself and embarrass myself if it doesn't work. All right. So I think what I'm going to do is just copy this animation since it's falling like I want it to do and then I'm going to go through and rotate each one so maybe instead of 120 I'll do a different increment so it looks a bit different So I'll do negative 90 each time. Oh, I guess that's not going to work, is it? Nope. All right, let's try that again. Okay, so that one's 90. Okay, so I'm rotating it by 30 degrees each time. Having to brush up on my math skills. Okay, so now that's rotating and falling, and just for the hell of it, I'll change. 
the colors of some of the sides. So to do this kind of more quickly, what I can do is take the direct selection tool, and since I have everything shown, I can just click the layer that I want to, or sorry, the object that I want to change color. So let's say I want this to maybe go from red to purple. I'm just going to select each one of these, actually. And change the colors around. So now that's falling and that one side is changing color. Okay, so I'm going to save this really fast. Um, what I'm going to do is Instead of calling this isometric grid drawing, I'm going to call it isometric grid animation. Once again, you can name it whatever you want. Just something, just make it something that you can remember and you know that it's just for the animation and you're not adjusting anything to the map itself. And then I'm going to go to file and export. And I'm going to choose a PSD or a Photoshop file. So this is going to be something I can open directly in Photoshop and everything should translate over in terms of the layers. Um, if you have more than one artboard, you would choose use artboards and then select the specific artboard you're using. I only have one, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to export that. And then you want the color mode to be RGB because you're only going to see it on screen. The resolution, um, you can try doing it at uh, 150. Just depends on how much, um, how much, how many colors you have, how much, uh, how many effects you have, how many animations, things like that. Um, you have a lot going on, and it's more complicated. Just go ahead and export at 72. Uh, like I've mentioned before, this is just going to be seen. The animation is only going to be seen on screen, so 72 is the typical size for screen images anyway. The other thing you really want to make sure of is that you leave right layers selected. You do not want a flat image. If you say, if you export it with a flat image, you're not going to be able to animate everything. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to go find my Photoshop file. 